You know, I've been thinking, and I think my look just isn't cool enough. Like, this, this kind of stuff, that's not going to attract the ladies. But this, oh yeah. Call me the Chica Magnet. Hey everyone, Average T here, and welcome to the top 20 FNAF songs ranked by me. Just getting this out of the way off the bat, this ranking list is based on my opinion. I hold a deep appreciation for nearly every FNAF song, each resonating with me for different reasons. This is absolutely not an attack or judgment against any of the talented artists behind these songs. Every artist has poured heart and soul into their creations, and this list merely reflects my personal preferences. Remember, music is subjective, and every song has its own special place in the FNAF community. With all that being said, let's get into the ranking. Kicking off our list, we're taken back to a classic favorite with number 20, I Am The Purple Guy by DA Games. From the get-go, Will's gritty, metal-edged vocals lay down a menacing foundation that fits the character of post-spring-trapped William Afton to a T. And while it's rooted in the darker tones of the FNAF universe, there's an infectious catchiness to it, a testament to the song's stellar composition. The drums, especially the kick, give the song a pulsating heartbeat, driving the rhythm forward with intensity. The chorus stands out, both memorable and perfectly crafted, but for me, the real goosebump moment comes during the Leave me alone, I'm caught to the bone segment. The buildup there is nothing short of electric, it's one of my favorite FNAF song buildups. The title of I Am The Purple Guy carries an intriguing angle. While the name may have been chosen due to the initial ambiguity surrounding William Afton's actual name, it adds an air of notoriety, likening himself to a self-styled serial killer, embracing his infamous nickname. And while some songs, such as groundbreaking Springtrap Finale, offer a more sympathetic angle on William, there's something raw and unapologetic about DA Games' portrayal of Afton, almost as if he's happy being trapped. I can see why some might lean toward the remastered version, especially with that deliciously rolled R on YET TO BE FREED. Yet there's something about the original's rawness and authenticity that holds its own charm. It might be rough around the edges in places, but sometimes it's those imperfections that give a song its character. In the original, he seems to hit the notes much more precisely, providing an auditory experience that feels smoother and less like pitch-corrected yelling. That said, both versions have their merits and shine in their own right. Holding its own at number 19 is Never Be Alone by Shadro. In a sea of countless remixes, the allure of the original remains unparalleled. This track is the epitome of the FNAF 4 ambience, with distinct echoes of the game's 8-bit segments. Shadro's signature touch, blending chiptune elements, infuses the song with a nostalgic video game vibe that's both familiar and refreshing. Shadro's vocals truly shine here. With every note, he encapsulates the game's intricate blend of melancholy and menace. The instrumental breaks are infectious, making it nearly impossible to resist bobbing your head or tapping your feet. The flow of his song is commendable, with I keep looking over your shoulder being one of my favorite parts of the song. A striking aspect of Never Be Alone is the juxtaposition of the upbeat instrumental mixed with the somber undertones of the lyrics. The song primarily focuses in the cheery realm of E-flat major, which lends itself to a deceptively joyous sound. Yet delve deeper into the lyrics, and there's an evident shadow. Wait, no, no, chat shadow, or a darker narrative lurking beneath the surface. Sliding in at number 18 is "Too Far" by CK9C, a distinctively electronic rock fusion that, despite being somewhat under the radar, packs an emotional wallop. I would honestly say this and another song later on this list are the most underrated FNAF songs, and it's a shame more people don't listen to them. This track delves deep into the psyche of Michael Afton, painting a heart-wrenching portrayal of a man riddled with guilt over causing his brother's tragic death. From the moment you're greeted with this raw, desperate scream of, it's all my fault, at the start, it's clear this is an intense emotional journey. The entire composition feels like a deep dive into Michael's tumultuous mind as he grapples with remorse over his past choices, greatly wishing for a chance to undo his mistakes. Lyrically, this song shines with its gut-wrenching authenticity, Every word pulls you further into Michael's world of self-condemnation. Coupled with the pulsating backbeat, reminiscent of a heartbeat, it accentuates the song's introspective mood. As the track progresses, the shift in the vocal delivery after the first chorus, where the lyrics are yelled with increased passion, amplifies the anguish and turmoil within him, leading up to the instrumental break. The layered vocals of Too Far during this instrumental section eerily feel like, like echoes of past regrets bouncing around in his mind. The electric guitar toward the end is the cherry on top, adding another layer of depth to the already intricate soundscape. 
When you consider Michael's relentless efforts in adulthood to rectify his father's misdeeds, the song becomes all the more impactful. The haunting realization that, despite all of his attempts at redemption, he might never truly forgive himself is profoundly heartbreaking. Helping me emotionally recover from the last song in 17th place is Creeping Towards the Door by Griffinilla. Right from the get-go, this track oozes an infectious charm, reminiscent of old-timey cartoons, and it's the nostalgic quality that sets it apart from many other FNAF songs. Listening to it is like stepping into a bygone era, with monochrome animations dancing across the screen, and it's not hard to envision oneself gleefully bouncing along like Mickey Mouse in those vintage Disney shorts. And it's not hard to envision yourself gleefully bouncing along like Mickey Mouse in those old Disney cartoons. There's a certain playfulness in the wordplay, although admittedly some lines can be a tad tricky to decipher at first listen. For instance, the line, and the powers running thin, had me initially hearing, and the flowers rotting in, but perhaps that's a part of the song's charm. There's an undeniable folktale-esque vibe to creep in towards the door, making it feel like a whimsical, cautionary tale set to a catchy tune. It's a refreshing approach considering the dark and often intense themes that permeate much of the FNAF musical landscape. Coming in at number 16, we've got... Five More Nights by JT Music. Kicking off with an Eminem reference, this song only goes up from there. In many ways, this feels quintessentially like a tribute to FNAF 2. The distinct beats accompanied by the sounds of children's cheering perfectly encapsulate the vibrant and yet uncanny atmosphere of a new children's entertainment venue. Additionally, the beat's slightly artificial quality is a standout, offering a unique sonic texture that's both captivating and fitting for the theme. The chorus is catchy, it's memorable, and it's bound to be on repeat in your head long after your first listen. While JT Music's later tracks may have leaned a tad too much into more melodic choruses, what's particularly striking about Five More Nights is the balance it strikes. It doesn't feel like a rapper awkwardly venturing into the FNAF realm, instead it genuinely feels as if the in-game character has grabbed the mic, blending narrative and rhythm effortlessly. The lyrics are packed with clever wordplay and rhymes that keep you engaged, and the inclusion of the phone guy verse is an inspired choice. Nailing the 15th spot is another JT music song, Another Five Nights. Right off the bat, the beat on this track is fire, and not just metaphorically. It genuinely feels like a sound that can emanate from the rusty old machinery of FNAF 3, fusing the settings and inherent eeriness and sounds with some pulsating rhythms. The main, gravelly, robotic voice of the song is exactly how I'd imagine Springtrap would sound, exuding a sense of menace and decay. When it comes to the lyrics, the Night Guard's verse stands out in a league of its own. It goes so hard! The extended rhyme scheme of the song doesn't just play with the listener's expectations, but it showcases some clever lyricism. Maintaining a consistent ending sound throughout an entire verse is no small feat, and JT Music pulls it off with flair. One line in this song is, Evil doesn't die, a line that despite its age, still holds up pretty well considering we still aren't done with this stupid rabbit! The song's longevity can also be attributed to its cautious approach to the game's storyline. Instead of delving deep into speculation or making bold, lore-based claims, it focuses on setting a vivid atmosphere and delivering pure auditory adrenaline. Is this job even worth a damn? Ask soon and I might not work again. It's a brand new gig, I gotta learn again. Spring trap, who's that? Never heard of it. Tell me, what the hell was a curve? At number 14, we have the undeniably iconic Join Us For A Bite by JT Music. You could play this out loud in public and any and all FNAF fans near you would now suddenly be in front of you and doing the TikTok dance. Stan also replicated the performance live. That's a mark of genuine talent. The section where she goes, I lost it long ago, not alone, baby, showcases the depth of curing the 13th spot. We have the delightfully quirky, now hiring at Freddy's by JT Music. I promise this list isn't just JT Music songs. This is one of the most charming FNAF songs out there. What starts as a seemingly joyful performance gradually unfolds into a slightly unhinged and satirical tone. Its greatest strength lies in its paradoxical nature. On the surface, it's every bit the preppy tune you'd expect to accompany an advertisement for a family-friendly arcade restaurant. But as the song goes on, the dark humor becomes evident. The satirical jabs at Fazbear Entertainment's questionable business ethics and practices are incredibly well written. At its core, the song is from the perspective of a Fazbear CEO tutoring an initiate on the ins and outs of running the sinister company. It starts innocuously enough, with advice like, minimize the casualties. However, as the track progresses, the advice spirals into darker territory, with the CEO endorsing murder and even going as far as providing tips to do it better. By the song's end, the audacity reaches its peak as they blatantly declare their intention to suck the soul out of you. Yet, in the same breath, they reassure you by claiming they'll bring you back to life soon. However, the cherry on top with this song has to be the music video. 
filmed with actual people donning real animatronic suits or dressing as employees in a genuine arcade setting, it elevates the entire experience. It's a testament to the dedication and love JT Music pours into their music, and especially their live action videos. Occupying the 12th spot is the unforgettable Dying of Fire by The Living Tombstone. First off, let's talk about Ellie Monty's vocal performance. Her voice in this track is a powerhouse performance that catapults this song into a realm of its own. While one might argue that this song skews more towards a generic angry rock song than capturing the specific atmosphere of FNAF 3, there's no denying its undeniable catchiness. The instrumental break, as with all the Living Tombstone songs, is very good. Now, the accompanying music video holds up strangely well. Despite the fact that they're using old SFM models, the animators achieved a shockingly realistic aesthetic that, weirdly enough, still stands the test of time. I used to play this song as a child and pretend I was fighting against evil people or bad guys or monsters in some kind of epic fight. Yeah, I was a, a weird kid. But there's just something about this song that evokes a sense of the final battle. Claiming the 11th spot on our list is The Bonnie Song by Groundbreaking. At its core, this song tells the tragic tale of Withered Bonnie, a character whose life, or rather afterlife, has been a series of unfortunate events. Completely broken and used for spare parts to aid in the creation of his successor, Toy Bonnie, this song captures the unique anguish and isolation Withered Bonnie feels, an experience none of the other animatronics share. There's a raw emotionality to this track, which might come off as fanfiction-esque to some, but therein lies its charm. This is a Bonnie yearning for recognition, desperately clinging to his last possession, his guitar, to serenade listeners and ensure he isn't lost to obscurity. Groundbreaking truly pushes boundaries with the song's execution. The singer's robust performance, pitched up a few keys, finds this sweet spot that feels both human and mechanical. The twist not only enhances the song's atmosphere, but also magnifies Bonnie's conflict between his animatronic nature and his quest for individual recognition. One of the song's standout moments is the section where Bonnie's voice starts to glitch rhythmically, echoing phrases he said throughout the song. It's an ingenious representation of Bonnie's fractured state. The conclusion surges to a tumultuous climax of auditory chaos where layered vocals converge with immense energy before subduing and Bonnie's voice slowly turning off. Many fan animations of this song depict Withered Bonnie seeking revenge on the toy variant, and while that may seem stupid to some, it's an interpretation that actually really resonates with the song's narrative. Landing at number 10, we're treated to the enigmatic Bad Rabbit by Try Hard Ninja. Oh man, the second Bonnie song in a row. Right from the beginning, the brisk tempo and infectious beats make it impossible to stay still. There's a contagious energy about Bad Rabbit that invokes an involuntary head bop every single time. What stands out is how authentically the song captures Bonnie's essence. Listening to it, one can't shake off the feeling that Bonnie is right there, singing or perhaps warning you. The instrumental interludes are incredibly well crafted, with the guitar solo being my favorite part. The chorus, with its ABCB rhyme scheme, cleverly balances between descriptions of Bonnie's distinct features and more ominous undertones, reminding listeners of the duality of the character. If there was ever an ideal representation of Bonnie in song form, Bad Rabbit is undoubtedly a top contender. Drawing parallels with Bonnie's mixtape by Griffinilla, Bad Rabbit feels like an evolved, polished version showcasing the best elements while adding its own unique flair. One of the song's intriguing choices is to veer away from the typical nature of a child spirit inhabiting Bonnie. Instead, it delves into the psyche of Bonnie as an autonomous character, one that's not just a puppet, but a sentient entity with its own dark intent. And then there are the explosive vocal outbursts towards the climax of the song. Lines like, I can hear you, or, and it's all over, erupt over the repeated chorus creating an atmosphere that feels like Bonnie's final boss fight. Securing the ninth spot is Look At Me Now by Try Hard Ninja and Groundbreaking. Now for a bit of context, after the release of Sister Location, I fell off from the FNAF bandwagon. Now, younger me might have been raving about how Sister Location is so cool, but I admittedly missed out on some significant releases during my hiatus. This includes both Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria Simulator and this song's release in 2017. It wasn't until UCN rekindled my interest in the series that Look At Me Now served as the auditory jolt reminding me of my love for this franchise. First things first, this track is a certified banger among the modern FNAF songs. The production is slick, boasting a circus-like vibe throughout the instruments. Now, as much as I enjoyed the overall composition, I will admit that the instrumental break feels a bit lacking. It's predominantly boosted bass that's somewhat forgettable in the grand scheme of this song. Lyrically, it's a straightforward tale. Freddy walks us through his transformation from a tragic child to a vengeful monster, like a FNAF version of Jekyll and Hyde. Although the lyrics aren't groundbreaking, pun absolutely intended. They set the stage for what the song aims to convey. The chorus, however, is an absolute earworm. You'll catch yourself humming it long after you've turned off the song. 
What took me by surprise was the collaboration with Groundbreaking. I initially didn't realize he was part of the song, and I only realized it when I was listening to the song while writing this script. All things considered, it may not be a storytelling masterpiece, but it's a catchy, high-energy tune that earns its spot as one of the modern FNAF classics. At number 8, it's the anthem of the series, Five Nights at Freddy's by The Living Tombstone. It's not just a song. It's a cultural phenomenon. When people think of FNAF, this track often reverberates in the back of their minds, making it nothing short of the franchise's unofficial theme song. It's astounding how well it stands the test of time. The robotic vocal texture feels right at home in this context, and the electric beats are extremely, EXTREMELY good. The song gets you right off the bat with the intro. The iconic notes of the tour de march set the tone, immediately captivating the listeners. Then, like a jolt of electricity, that first beat hits, and you're plunged headfirst into the song. Everybody knows the song. It's so iconic that even but Jack Black right. knows the song. It's that level of catchy, an earworm in the best sense of the term. Go to any FNAF fan and they'll likely be able to recite it word for word. If the FNAF movie doesn't roll credits to this track, I'm not watching it. At number 7 we have The Puppet Song by Try Hard Ninja. This is a piece that stands in a unique emotional space as one of the very few FNAF songs that is tugged in my heartstrings, akin to the emotional resonance of Dream Your Dream. Every note, every lyric is a reminder of the bitter reality, children robbed of their innocence and childhood, now lingering in a bleak, eerie void, fading into a distant memory. The weight of this narrative is palpable in every aspect of the song. Igor pours every ounce of emotion into his vocals, and you can genuinely sense the anguish in his voice. The inclusion of the haunting children's choir singing is far from being eerie, and evokes an image of a group of children lost in time, yearning for freedom and release from their tragic entrapment. As is typical of Try Hard Ninja's work, the production quality is top tier and the mixing is impeccable. I love the addition of the wind in the beginning, it really adds to the soundscape. A notable highlight is the instrumental break, a much needed respite from the song's heavy themes, yet still dripping with atmosphere. Oh, and also the build-up leading to the instrumental break is impeccable, especially with the glitching of the alone vocal, which just gets faster right before the beat drop. The song crafts a haunting lullaby that speaks of lost innocence, longing, and the hope of redemption that stays with you long after the final piano note. Taking the sixth spot on this list is the timeless It's Been So Long by The Living Tombstone. An unequivocal classic, this track feels as though it's been plucked right out of the FNAF floor, embodying the essence of the game even though it stands apart as a non-canon masterpiece. The female vocalist further elevates the track, pouring raw emotion into every note, making the listener not just hear, but truly feel the song's depth. The lyrics weave a poignant narrative of the real world ramifications of such tragedies, especially on the loved ones left behind. While the FNAF theory community often delves into discussions about the deaths of the children, treating it with an analytical detachment, it's been so long thrust the emotional implications into the spotlight by having the singer be related to one of the victims. It humanizes the lore, prompting us to consider the anguish, the despair, and the trauma faced by these families. A vital aspect of the song's allure is undeniably its compelling music video. Rendered in a pixel art style reminiscent of FNAF 2's 8-bit death minigames, the video shows the haunting story of a mother whose son tragically falls victim to William Afton, only to be cruelly encased with the lifeless confines of Golden Freddy. While the pixel art aesthetic has since become overused in FNAF music videos, it's arguably an It's Been So Long that it finds its most effective and pioneering use. Of course, it's hard to mention It's Been So Long without mentioning that it gave birth to the man behind the slaughter meme. While memes come and go, this particular one reignited my interest in the song, particularly its instrumental break. And I must say, Rediscovering the track through this theme was a pleasant reminder of just how fantastic that instrumental section truly is. Landing firmly at the fifth spot is the underrated Marvel 5 Locking in at fourth place is The Show Must Go On by Mando Pony. While it's crucial to acknowledge the controversy surrounding the creator and how he's a terrible person, I'd like to emphasize the significance of separating art from the artist. So with that being said, there's no denying that this song is a sonic powerhouse. From the outset, the singer's voice sets a unique tone. It's precisely the kind of voice I'd imagine for Toy Bonnie. The rock-heavy influences propel the song forward, ensuring listeners are jamming from the start to the final note. Venturing outside one's musical comfort zone can be daunting, but the artist nails the vibe, especially commendable considering they aren't traditionally a rock artist. Admittedly, at times, the lyrics lean a bit towards the fanfiction side, like most of his songs, but they perfectly convey the goofily evil aura that many of the characters embody. There's a certain feel to the show must go on, which is deeply reminiscent of its time. 
It transports listeners back to a time when animatronic ships were all the rage, and the fan character of Vincent was... Next off, taking the bronze on this list is the acoustic version of It's Me by Try Hard Ninja. This version, stripped down and peaceful, feels like a gentle breeze after a storm, encapsulating the serenity that might follow the whirlwind events of the series. What truly sets this version apart are Try Hard Ninja's subdued vocals. There's an effortless grace to them, harmonizing perfectly with the simplistic guitar accompaniment. Absent are the layered deep vocals from the original which, while impactful in their own right, wouldn't have fit in an acoustic version. This might have been unintentional, but I find the guitar has almost a bit of a Latin flair. It brings a warmth, a passion to the song that contrasts beautifully with its otherwise calm demeanor. The addition of the strings only elevates the atmosphere, weaving a tapestry of emotions. Somber, yet undeniably captivating. Above all, the vibe of the songs evokes memories. Not the clear-cut, vibrant memories, but the foggy, distant ones. The kind that, in hindsight, feels surreal much like the hazy recollections of a child's time at the pizzeria, where things might not have been as innocent as they seemed. Securing the silver on this list is the masterful Dream Your Dream by Try Hard Ninja. Clearly with six mentions on this list so far, Igor's influence in the FNAF music scene is undeniable, and this track further showcases his exceptional prowess. From the first strum, the beautiful guitar work instantly captivates. Igor's voice is the real hero here. It's hauntingly perfect, creating an atmosphere that's both ethereal and gripping. As the song progresses, what really stands out is the crescendo during the finale. The layered vocals paired with the electrifying guitar riffs culminate in a grand spectacle of sound, akin to a swirling tornado of chaos before gracefully descending into a serene aftermath. It's a whirlwind of emotion and haunting beauty, a roller coaster that leaves the listener yearning for more. Lyrically, the song delves deep into the themes of FNAF 4, per perfectly echoing the gameplay's emphasis on nightmares, dreaming, and the restless state of sleep. However, the brilliance lies in the song's universality. The lyrics can transcend the FNAF storyline and resonate with various life scenarios, broadening its appeal and making it relatable to an even wider audience. It's a testament to Try Hard Ninja's artistry and the power of music to tell a compelling story. Topping my list at number one is... None other than Stay Calm by Griffinilla. A trip down nostalgia lane, this gem encapsulates the classic FNAF ambiance in its most unadulterated form. That saxophone solo is iconic. It brings a robust energy that makes you want to groove along with the animatronics, even if just for a moment. One of the standout moments in the track, for me, is the verse following the instrumental break, starting with There's a Ghost in the Machine. There's an interesting depth to the voice modulation, which, while clearly pitch corrected and tuned, is a testament to how artistic choices can magnify the sonic appeal of a track. It's not about sounding natural, it's about creating an audio experience. Given that this track was one of the inaugural anthems of the FNAF music world, especially in its early days, it's commendable how it remains timeless and still gives many contemporary FNAF songs a run for their money. The mix is top-notch, the clarity is pristine. Griffinello doesn't just churn out a song, he crafts an auditory masterpiece. While many FNAF tracks lean into the darker, more sinister vibes of the franchise, this song feels like a delightful deviation. It's as if the animatronics are just inviting Mike for a game night and not a deadly chase. The lightheartedness stands out, offering a charming break amidst the generally intensive FNAF soundscape. Sure, the bits with the animatronics talking can feel a tad repetitive after a few listens, but it's hardly a deal breaker. And for those who wish to skip, there are versions without this segment. Jeff Burgess's vocal execution as the singer is quintessential Mike Schmidt. There's an endearing blend of dorkiness and trepidation. It's as if Mike's persona has been perfectly encapsulated in this song, and we don't even know what he sounds like. I read somewhere that people have used this song as a form of therapy and repeated the lyrics to calm themselves down, which is a testament to its profound reach. Stay Calm is not just a song, it's a legacy, a trip down memory lane, and an iconic representation of the FNAF universe. It rightfully earned its spot as number one on this list. And that's the end. Did you agree with any of my picks? I'm telling you right now, you probably didn't. But please let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear what your favorite FNAF songs are. If you guys kind of like this video, I might make a ranking of the top 50 FNAF songs in the future. Or maybe 100. Or maybe all of them. That'd be a long video. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please hit that subscribe button and give this video a like. It really helps out the channel and helps support me. And yeah, this has been Average T, and I'll see you on the flip side.